Okay, welcome back to tutorial number two. We're going to extend on the previous tutorial here. So you should have drawn this, um, and then I will uh, add to this a little bit. So let's learn a few more things and make some modifications to this shape. So you should have a hole positioned in the middle here as I had placed it. This square rectangle I randomly placed on this face. So yours might be slightly different position, but somewhere close to the middle. Now, when you um, type fractions in Inventor and or want to make some adjustments, let's talk about that. So let's say that I messed up. Let's say that I made the wrong size um, height or whatever, and I want to adjust it. Or I just want to play and adjust it. I just want to modify something that I already did. You can do that. So notice what's happening here. If you've been watching, you may have noticed that there has been this progression, this building of um, everything you've been doing is kind of showing up over here in this menu. Now, do not close this. Do not ever close this modeling menu. This um, you need to to work in on a regular basis. Now, notice um, my sketches are not there. I can't see them. That's because after you do a sketch, the extrusion kind of takes over and then it's nested. So if I hit the plus mark and expand that extrusion, now I can find sketch one. If I expand extrusion two, I find sketch two and so on. So I can go in and modify the individual sketches if I please. So if I double click on this little icon here, I can get back into the sketch. And if I click on one of these dimensions, double click, I can modify it. Maybe I want it to be something different. Let's make it six and a half. Now, unlike AutoCAD, there is no dash, no dash anymore. Six space, one slash two. Now, of course, you can enter it as a decimal. That's fine, too. Green check. It will automatically update. All right. Now, if one of these dimensions was not here and you needed to modify a line, and that will happen, you can dimension it yourself by adding the dimension like this. Now, you might get a an error that says, you're trying to over constrain a sketch. That's fine. You can just say accept. Um, but you can dimension features that if it doesn't pre dimension them for you, you can do it yourself. So now you learned how to make, how to type a fraction in. You learned how to modify an existing dimension. Now, if we go to finish sketch, we can see that modification. Okay, there could be a scenario where you want to delete an extrusion, but not the sketch, or maybe both. So if you go to the extrusion and right click on it, you can go to delete. Now when you do that, it's going to ask you if you also want to delete the sketch and dependent sketches, it might even ask that go with it. If you want to only delete the extrusion, but keep the sketch, then uncheck to additionally delete the following. And you would uncheck both of them. Sometimes this one also is highlighted. And then say OK. And only the extrusion would go away. All right, now I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave this alone for now. All right, now we're going to add something new onto here. So we're going to do another sketch. I'm going to click on this face. I'm going to draw two random circles. doesn't matter where. This time I'm just going to place them randomly on this face. Notice you can track from another center. Again, the random locations and random diameters. I don't care about that. Now I'm going to hit Finish Sketch. And now I'm going to show you what happens here. If we go and extrude one of these, let's assume I wanted to extrude both of them. I'd have to select both profiles. And it would make sense, right, if I'm extruding them both, uh, maybe the same height, I'd do them both at the same time. But uh, for learning reasons, 
I'm going to teach you something in addition to um, extruding. You already know how to extrude, actually. So I'm going to extrude one of these, and then I'm going to say okay. And I don't care if you make it. Let's let's go ahead and, and uh, make it three inches. That's fine. So three inch, extrude this cylinder, and say okay. Now watch what happens. The sketch disappeared. So let's say I messed up and I really did want to extrude that. And that's going to happen. I guarantee it's going to happen all the time. So how do I get the sketch back to extrude that other circle that was here? Well, you got to go back into that sketch, find the sketch here, right click on it. Now see how if I hover my mouse on it, it becomes highlighted here. So if you don't know what sketch you were working in, just hover over the sketch and you can see that the sketch details become highlighted so you know what sketch is what. So here's that sketch. If I right click and go to visibility, I can turn that sketch back on. Now I can go and extrude that other circle. However, I don't want you to do that today. Sorry for that interruption. So yeah, leave this alone because learning is is doing right i want you to actually do that i want to see when i walk around and look at this i want to see this sketch which proves to me you did this cylinder it disappeared you came to sketch five you turned it back on and that proves to me that you did it again learning by doing All right, that's going to do it for this tutorial. Please arrange your screen to look exactly like mine. You can do that by clicking on this corner of the view cube. Or remember, you can hold shift and the middle mouse wheel at the same time in orbit and get it positioned somewhere around that same area. Either way is fine, but put your object in the same location, the same position. So I can come around. I want to see your hole. This way, I want to see these cylinders. I want to see that sketch. So it should look almost identical to this. This uh, square and these cylinders may be a little different, but these two things, um, the cube and the circle, should be identical to mine based on my dimensions.